starting about 1996 is when this joystick console came out and we started it out with Virginia DOT. Now, at the end of the day, both of these do the exact same thing, it's just packaged different. That's all it is. So back in those days, we were still putting light, output lighting on here, such as emergency lights, spreader lights, and stuff like that as well, uh, as well as the, uh, the plow light, because trucks had not advanced enough on the plow light side of it that anyone was using multiplex wiring, and the switch was mounted in the dash differently. So uh, these are the two, the two or the older consoles that we've got. This one started out in 96, and uh, probably the last one of these we put on was probably close to Lynchburg, I would think, uh, maybe about five, six years ago, something like that. So uh, this one has slowly kind of been dwindling down and, and, uh, uh, and phasing out, and the last one we put on was probably about five or six years ago. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're getting the same thing done. There's a lot of similarities here, but there's a lot of differences too. So let me go through this and, and point that out. We still have a master switch. Um, that master switch still works the same as it did on that rocker switch console. You got to turn the key on and then you can enable the hydraulics by turning the master switch on. We still have that red lens in there, just like we did on the other one. We still have the low oil, hot oil light. Although they're a little bit further apart now, they're not right beside one another. Uh, we, we still do have that light to let you know when the hydraulics are shut down. All right, the, uh, um, the joystick itself uh, has a safety button in it. In order for this joystick to do anything, you can accidentally hit this thing and nothing should work on it until you pull this trigger button in. The trigger is your safety button. So pulling the trigger in activates or makes the joystick live at that point. And depending on what mode you've got it in, whether it's plow mode or dump mode, uh, will make those functions work. In this case, we're in plow mode at the moment. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull the trigger that uh, livens up the, uh, the joystick and then pulling back, plow goes up, pushing forward, plow down, push left, plow goes left, push right, plow goes right. And the little black thumb button here is for a blast. So it just moved from the little chrome button on the front of that uh, uh, system on the rocker switch console to a thumb button here on this particular one. And it's still the same type of function. It's a momentary function. As long as you hold it down, we're blasting. When you release it, it goes back to whatever the presets were. So you can see we're, we're you can see the trend here. We're still doing the same things. We're just doing it a different way. Now, when I switch this over here to dump mode, uh, and pull the trigger button. We light up the, uh, the abilities of the joystick, and when we pull back, body goes up, body goes down, tarp cover, and tarp uncover. Because uh, on the trucks that we did these on, they had a hydraulic tarp system on it. So hydraulic uh, uh, valves operate the tarp on our hydro tarp uh, set up for VDOT and these other municipalities. Now, we could have operated a, an electric tarp as well, uh, but it would have to have a reversing relay up underneath the cab. So you technicians, you probably know what I'm talking about there. Uh, but this is basically two joysticks in one. Instead of having two joysticks side by side and possibly grabbing the wrong one when you needed it to get something done, we decided we would put this in a mode button because what it does is when you go into plow mode, the dump body and tarp system won't work. And there again, vice versa, when you put it in a dump mode, that means the plow won't work. So you're, in, you're usually in one mode or the other. Now, let me tell you what's happened. Um, and if you've got a gray console, uh, this console that's painted battleship gray like this one is here, um, you've got the new safety feature that we had in, put in this probably about 12 or 15 years ago. Now, if you've got an older truck that has a black console in it, it does not have that feature and does not have the ability to put that feature in it. But what's happened here is that VDOT called us up and they were having some problems with dumping spreaders out in the middle of the highway. And, you know, realistically, it's happened. Uh, so here we are in a bad storm. It's snowing to beat the band, and we've got a truck loaded with salt, and the guy had it in the wrong mode here, thought he had it in plow mode, and he had it in dump mode. And here he is thinking the plow's raising up. He's looking through the windshield, and what's happening? The dump's going up because he's in the dump mode. It, it's real. It, it has happened before. Uh, so um, what we did is we came up with a safety feature to help prevent something like that from happening. And that's why the con consoles here turn colors. They went from a black, a matte black, uh, to this battleship gray. Now what that does is that 
Uh, when you install your spreader in the back of the truck and you plug in the electrical connector at the back, it sends a signal to this console, hey, spreader's installed, let's disable the body up function. All the other functions will work on the truck just fine. Even body down will work if the body's not all the way down for some reason. But the body up will not work if it's properly wired. Technicians, we'll talk about that a little bit later on in your manual. We've got you a page dedicated to that. To if, if yours is not wired right, to show you how simple that circuit is and how to... Yeah, gray console. It'll be a battleship gray. The metal, uh, metal part here will be a battleship gray. Uh, the ones that are in matte black do not have that feature, but the ones in gray do. All right. Now, that feature came out at least 15 years ago, just roughly. Can't give you an exact year, but it was at least 15 years ago. Could have been over to 20 years ago when that feature came out. Uh, but the best way to know is a black console, grain console. The black one does not have it, the gray one does have that feature. And from a technician standpoint, we'll go over that in a little bit. All right, so I already talked with you about the, uh, the blast button here uh, on, the, on the thumb button for the joystick. It operates the same way as it did on the other console, it just uh, changed positions. The spreader controls are the same. We have a rocker switch here that determines automatic or manual uh, and it still works the same as the toggle switch did on the other one. The functionality is the same. It takes the same circuit board. Everything is basically the same. Uh, it's just configured different. It's just laid out a little bit different here. Uh, the same knobs, the same dial assemblies up underneath, uh, all those things are the same. They change. Now, from a technician standpoint, keep in mind that there are revisions. There, there have been revisions over the years. It started with A, and I think we went all the way up to like... Uh, uh, G or F or something like that. So whenever you're changing a circuit board on one of these spreader controls, make sure that you are changing the circuit board um, from a higher letter, the same letter that you've got, or a higher letter. Because the ones with a higher revision, such as the F or a G, they'll fit all trucks. But if, uh, if you've got an older circuit board in your inventory and you're wanting to put it on a newer truck, you might have difficulty doing that because that's, uh, uh, we can't take an old circuit board and bring it forward, but we can take a new circuit board and go all the way back to square one. So just keep that in mind from the electronic side of it. We're able to do that. Uh, is, uh, uh, there are different revisions, A through F or G, and we can take an F or G and go all the way back into the fleet but we can't take an A and bring it up to any, anything higher than an A. So just keep that in mind. So the good part about that is all new circuit boards will, will fit all your new trucks, uh, or old, old and new trucks, excuse me. All right, um, but as far as the controls, they work exactly the same way. Uh, the only thing we did here is we just put these in a rocker switch instead of a toggle switch like the other one. Um, we already talked about the, uh, the mode button here, whether it's in plow mode or dump mode. Uh, we went through that, talked about the master switch, the emergency light switch, same thing on this console. This is the only one that is battery operated. Everything else on this console is ignition source. Uh, this is the only one that's battery operated for the same reasons as what the other one was. All right, uh, this one also has plow light switch. Remember on your newer trucks, you don't have a plow light switch in this console anymore. It's part of the switching on the dash now because of multiplex wiring. Uh, this one also has a, uh, has a spreader light as well. Uh, is the ignition source instead of battery source uh, like it used to be. So um, the, uh, another advancement that has happened in these consoles too is we have pushed the reset circuit breakers over here on the side. Instead of having fuses and things like that, and some of the fuses behind the dash on this one, we actually put a row of reset circuit breakers. So if your spreader control uh, pops a circuit, this little five amp right here is to, just to push to reset. Um, to, uh, to take care of the problem. If it's just a freak thing that, you know, for whatever reason, it just uh, popped the circuit. Now, from an operator standpoint, if this thing did pop out and you had to push and reset that and it pops right back out, if it does that more than about three times, we got a problem. There's a short in a wire somewhere. From a troubleshooting standpoint for you technicians, this will help you because now you don't have to keep uh, bushel baskets full of fuses at your toolbox. We have a push to reset circuit breaker now. Uh, so this thing is not going to, not going to, um, you're not going to have to throw it away and get you another one. You just push to reset it. But from an operator standpoint, if this thing pops out more than about three times in a row, you got a problem. You got a dead short somewhere. So that's your reason to come back to the shop, have somebody to check it out and see what's going on. 
All right, the, uh, the next one over here is, uh, is for our master switch for our main hydraulics. This is a 20 amp, uh, and it pretty much lines up with it, not perfectly, but close to it. And uh, then the next one is for emergency lights. Uh, this is the only uh, battery operated switch source in this panel. And this is a 20 amp, strictly for our emergency lights. And then the last but not least back here is for our spreader light. So you can see from a technician standpoint, we used to have only two fuses here, a battery and an ignition, and that was it. Now we've got four breakers here, so we can start isolating circuits. And the uh, uh, last thing I would want to happen, um, which could happen on the other one, is for my spreader light to short out and it kill my hydraulics on the truck. Essentially on this older model, it could do that just by a spreader light shorting out. But on this new one, we started isolating these circuits. Uh, anybody got any questions so far about this particular console? Any questions? All right, good. We'll move on to the next one. Now, like I said, this one started phasing out and moving away 